Thank you so much for coming to this session. Um, this might be the first one of Open House. So we're happy to kick it off um, and glad that folks are here to join. Um, this will be recorded. And so if there's any information where you're like, ooh, that was a great nugget. Well, God said, I can't remember. You can find this information on the Open House page, your main webpage, and we'll put that in the chat for you to have. My name is Blake Calhoun. I work in the School of Engineering in the Office of Undergraduate Programs. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Success. Um, I'm very happy to be here today and talking with you. I have two great colleagues who are also going to give answer your questions and also provide some of their insights on how we empower you and how we support students here at UBA Engineering. So I'll kick it off to Lisa. Can't hear you, Lisa. Good morning. Can you hear me now? Yes. Excellent. You know, we make tech work for us, not the other way around. Um, my name is Lisa Lampy. I do the same work that Blake does. Um, I oversee the undergraduate program office um, and work directly with students um, and very applicably to this conversation, empower all of our students to do their best work and be their best selves. Hand it over to James. Can y'all hear me? You good? Cool. All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, James Bland, director of the Center for Diversity Engineering. Uh, similar to Blake and Lisa, work heavily with a team of uh, support staff and faculty members to really carve out success for students from all backgrounds. Um, but specifically, you know, a keen eye on making sure that students from underserved backgrounds and demographics they have all the skills all the resources anything they need in order to be successful not just in engineering um but uva in general as well as life afterwards great right. thanks to you both and thanks for giving some time on this rainy friday for this meeting so we've put together a few questions that we thought could have some general applicability to folks um and so we'll take turns answering those and we also encourage you to put any questions you have in the chat. If you sent a question in with a registration, thank you so much for doing that. It turns out it's a little harder to get all of those questions on one page. So please don't be shy about repeating that question and putting it in the chat. I won't know, it'll actually probably help us with the flow a little bit. So we'll talk for maybe like a half an hour or so, 45 minutes, um, but we'll leave plenty of time for Q&A at the end. All right, so our first question, if you can say where students can find you, I left that off of mine. So where can we find you, given that hopefully we'll see more of you in the fall? Um, and what are some of the primary ways that your office advocates for students? I'll kick it off to you, James. Yeah, for sure. So one of the really cool places you could find me, I'm all over the place, but one place you can generally find me is the actual physical space that is the Center for Diversity in Engineering. Um, really excited because right before COVID, we underwent a renovation. Uh, so we have a lot more space to allow students to come and hang out, study. I mean, they folks do everything from watching Disney Plus all day to like just hanging out with folks, grabbing lunch in between classes. Um, so you can generally find me in the Center for Diversity Engineering, which is located in Thornton D111. I know that doesn't it might not mean anything to you right now, but when you come in the fall, we're pretty easy to find. And I'm generally there with my door open. I'm always happy to meet with students when they stop by, whether it's, hey, James, I'm having a really great day, or I need somebody to talk to and anything in between. Um, we're here for that. Um, ways that we uh, you say empower students, right, Blake? advocating for students, advocating but empowering for is the next students. question. So yeah, you can put it together. Advocating for students. Um, a little bit of everything, right? So we Blake and Lisa sitting on various committees that represent uh, policies, not just within the School of Engineering, but also UVA in general, um, and making sure that your voices are heard. My main reason for being here and the reason why I even entered the realm of student affairs in this workspace is to advocate for students and amplify voices. Um, so I do have the opportunity to be in whether it's individual meetings um, with leadership of engineering or just in random conversations I'm having with faculty and support staff that I may regularly engage with. 
always try to make sure that your voices are at the table, like your needs are being heard, um, and that we're able to, again, just be there to support and carve out space for you. So whether it's you coming into the CDE with the Center for Diversity and Engineering and making it your own. So again, if you want to come and watch stuff on a big screen TV or study with friends or come and just have a conversation about what's going on in this world that we're living in, that space is yours to make it yours, right? Because that's what we're here for. Um, and also on that flip side of that, the things that you feel like you need from us, from this resource rich institution that you're hoping to join, that we hope that you join, uh, making sure that your voice is at the table, whether you're there present and carving out a space for you and giving you space at the table or just amplifying your voices um, as we can. I think those are the best ways that I think about advocating uh, for students and things that I do on a, on a daily basis. Thanks, James. Lisa. Yeah. So behind me um, in my virtual background, uh, this is Thornton Hall. Um, home to a number of different administrative offices, but it's also a great place to just pop a squat and grab a picnic table out front um, this time of year, especially as you start, um, as we start into spring. But um, let's see, let's see my finger. Uh, Blake in my office is right there. <laughs> um, and I've been in exactly once since the last um, year, since, since the pandemic started. Um, and it's a beautiful building. Um, we hope that you'll feel welcomed in our space, in our office. Um, you literally walk in the front door of Thornton A and our office is to the right. Uh, we also are joined by a number of other um, offices, engineering career development. We have an embedded um, Dean of Students that is in our in our school that's just like right in the front door. You literally can walk in the front door and you'd like run into, Alex, Dean Alex's um, door, as well as we have embedded CAPS counselors. So I think to and that, that whole explanation hopefully answers the next question is, we've really worked hard over the last decade to build kind of an ecosystem of support. Um, you might find at most institutions that you have, you know, a centralized tutoring, a centralized counseling, a centralized, um, student Disability Access Center, right? Like all kind of working to support you and empower you and advocate for you. But oftentimes those things work in silos. We've built a team, kind of an ecosystem of a team where wherever you're at, kind of to the point of the title of this is wherever you're at, if you just raise your hand, because we know sometimes just raising your hand feels like a, a feat um, that, whoever you raise your hand to, whoever you email, whoever you walk into the office of, will help kind of amplify your voice and get you connected to the appropriate resource um, to connect and support you in ways that you might not even know how to ask for the kind of support. So um, we all work as a team and hopefully that feels very comforting and um, to Blake's next point, empowering of your transition to college. Absolutely. Thank you both for those great and thorough answers. Um, if I had anything to add, I would say that we're always trying to think ahead of the curve for you all. Sometimes it's a great reason to get to know us. Um, there are many things in college that can be challenging, but there are some things where like, you can know they're going to be challenging in advance that you don't have to get surprised, right? And so tutoring is a great resource that we have. And so, hey, you might think you don't need a tutor, but can I recommend a tutor as a current student? who can not just talk to you about the subject material, but hey, maybe they have the same professor in that class and maybe they can tell you about how they prepared for the test. And so there are a variety of ways that we try to think around the curve for you, um, whether that be in making our website easier to navigate or making sure that we're talking with your academic advisors and your instructors to make sure that we're, if you ever do need support, that we're there early and that we're there um, support you fully and holistically. So a lot of things that we do, around the clock, right? Not just when you meet with us to do that. Um, another way I think that we empower you all is that we spend the time with you all. So we meet with students one-on-one -on -one often. Um, Lisa and James and I, a large portion of our jobs is students say, hey, I just need to talk with somebody, anybody. And usually when that's us, that's the three of us. And so we spend a lot of time meeting with you all 
learning about you all, um, thinking about, hmm, they said they're really interested in the research. And they also said they don't know what type they want to do. I know somebody who they should talk to. Um, and so just being connectors for you all. So the most that we know about you is the most that we can kind of really be there and support you. So I do encourage you all to get to know us, um, to get to know really any of your faculty and any of the staff you find in engineering. The great thing about the engineering school is that all of, of us that work here, we talk to each other. And so let's say you know James best because you go to the CDE every Wednesday in between your two classes, right? James knows us. And James says, oh, I have this one student that you should talk to. Or I don't quite know the answer to the student's question. Can I ask you? And so we do that work within each other and we're all very connected. And so you'll never have this thing of like, mm, I gotta talk to five people to get an answer. Usually you can just talk to one of us and we are, we're happy to be helpful in that way. All right, thank you all. So next question, what advice do you have to incoming first year students to make a successful transition to college? You wanna start Lisa? Sure, I would say understand yourself and the situation you're kind of transitioning into. Um, so not everybody experiences college, is college the same way right? Your environment around you impacts your learning, your connection to peers, etc. Um, and we all know this. I think sometimes students are surprised that um, when they meet with us that we, we ask them like, no, in general, like, how, how are you doing? Um, because the nation around you, the state around you, the institution around you, and your classroom um, and your dorms, all, all our environmental things that um, we, we know that can propel you forward or feel, make you feel demotivated. Um, so we, we like to help students kind of assess that and not just think about their own individual kind of like persistence um, or motivation. Um, can you ask the question again, Blake? Yeah, anything about a successful transition. Successful transition. Yeah, so um, I think to hammer that point in, um, for example, um, our, our offices are thinking about how the George Floyd trials, for example, right now, watching that impact students learning and their kind of cognitive load um, to be able to for focus on things, um, especially when the verdict comes out. Um, how how your family dynamic in your in your online learning, you know, in, in high school, um, as well as beyond um, how you do in person. Um, so taking all of those things into account, and making sure you realize that all those things impact your ability to learn, to connect with other people to feel like you're part of a community, um, and to feel empowered. Um, so thinking about being successful, we think about the totality of not just the individual, like your own individual success, but how we can kind of collectively build a community where everybody feels like they're successful and they're not like playing this comparison game. Because all of us are gonna experience going through the curriculum, through college differently. And that's actually a really amazing community when we all can kind of voice our own different experiences and inform and support each other in ways that's, that's not, um, the thing that I don't like hearing from students is like, well, they seem like they have it easier. Well, let's talk about how things might be different and how we can all experience college differently and how you can get the support to kind of work through either feelings or connections to make sure that you're as successful as, as you would like to be and that the goals that you have. Um, so I guess main tip in summary is don't play the comparison game. Do ask for help. I think um, to like hammer in that last point, all of our students um, fill out a, a major declaration. We ask them what advice they give to the next uh, cohort of incoming first years. And maybe I can, can I take a little poll maybe in the chat? Can you, can you guess what their like, one of their top three are? So just put it in the chat, like, what do you think what do you think the first years who are current engineers would tell you guys as incoming first years, like what, what it takes to be successful? Do you have any, have any thoughts? Just put them in the chat. I'll give you guys a few minutes. Uh, 
I'll, I'll give you a hint in terms of what they don't say. They don't say work harder by yourself, right? That's what they, that's not something they, <laughs> they say. Um, one thing they do say is, you know, engineering um, is a team sport. Um, actually, one of the top things is asking for help is one of the most mature things you can do. Um, and that seems kind of counterintuitive to a lot of our incoming first years because asking for help might not have been a skill they developed in high school, right? Um, you know, just raising your hand and be like, something does not feel right here. Um, I'm struggling a little bit. And struggle does not um, equate to, um, yeah, Josh, um, struggling does not equate to you being not intelligent or not being as worth as much. It just means that you're really good at problem solving, right? And that's a sign of a really great engineer is that you realize that there's a problem, you identify the problem, you connect with the experts of that problem, you troubleshoot, and then you prototype, right? That's the sign of a best engineer. So um, asking your help for number one, and I think Joshua hit the head on number two, which is, not just managing your time well, but thinking about your priorities. Oftentimes we don't give ourselves the permission to say no to things, especially as you're transitioning to college. Constantly reflecting on your interests and how you know opportunities around you align with those interests and being okay saying no and being selective on what you do choose um, and persistent is, is really helpful. So not just managing your time and having you know organizational skills, but thinking about what exactly is my priority? What do I want to spend my time on? And what do I need to say no to? Thanks, Lisa, super helpful. I hope you all got some good tips and, uh, and if not, it'll be recorded. And we'll remind you when you get here, yep. when you meet with us one-on-one. -on -one. You see what I did there? I'm plugging that. Any insight from you, James, about what incoming first year students can do to have a successful transition to college? I would echo every single thing that Lisa just said. Um, what I mean with first years, uh, which I often do through the Bridge Program, which you all should apply to and be a part of. The Bridge Program is a transitional opportunity for first, incoming first year students to take a three credit math class, you know, really before the fall even starts, join this cohort of supportive peers, um, as well as have a really cool first year advisor like me, right? Anywho, this plug in that. Um, but I would say asking for help is the biggest thing, right? Not suffering in silence and not feeling like, oh, if I ask help, then that means I'm less than all the points that Lisa made. You know, you have Blake, myself, Lisa, a ton of other folks that will be in your corner and will go through the fire for you. And it's a lot easier for us to fix an issue on the front end than to be at the end of the semester and then try to backtrack and fix something. So don't be afraid to ask for help. I would say seek community, um, you know, and folks that can support you. This idea that we have to compare each other to other, everybody else. And I have a 3.4, but I have a 3.45. Like that doesn't get us anywhere. Like we're all gonna graduate. We're all gonna be successful. Um, so see community, form relationships, ask for help, and stay connected. Um, I think Lisa hit it spot on. Great. Yeah. I'll tie everyone's thoughts together. Um, you might be able to tell that we work really closely together because we have very similar and complementary thoughts and ideas about how to best empower you all. And so that's a positive, I think, in working here. Uh, one of the questions someone had in the registration was, why UVA? And I think, you look at this, like, we all have a similar thought and process and we care. Um, and you can find what we're saying echoed with your faculty and advisors and other staff that works here as well. So something I would say for a successful transition is to recognize your strengths before you come, right? Um, and then recognize the areas where you're like, hmm, I know I might be willing to change this about myself, right? And usually the way you figure out that is saying, well, what do I need to be successful here? Um, you are all very successful where you are now. Very, yes, we'll expand on the bridge program. Thanks, so great question. Yes, thumbs up to that. Um, so maybe in high school, what was successful was being in a lot of different clubs and taking a lot of AP classes and maybe not studying a ton, but like pulling, you know, working really hard the night before the exam. That might've been the key to success in high school. It's likely not gonna be your key to success here. And usually the sooner you can recognize, oh, I'm gonna salvage my desire to be involved, right? I'm gonna keep that part. 
I'm going to keep my willingness to learn. And I like taking different courses. And maybe I'll get rid of the, I got to get an A on everything. Maybe I'll get rid of that part, right? And that's a transition and that's difficult. So ask for help. Meet with Lisa, meet with myself, meet with James and say, hey, I think grades always stress me out. I don't love that about myself, right? So that's a helpful thing in your transitioning. Figuring out what's going to help you be successful here in college isn't always a carbon copy of what helped you be successful in high school. Um, and that's okay. The most important part of that is that you know how to make a successful toolkit. You can do it again. And, um, maybe before it was hammer and nails, and now you need screws. Right? So there's a process of um, the transition in that way. Um, other thing, I think I'll, I'll drill this part again, is understanding what your priorities are when you come here and what you need to do to achieve those things. Right? And I said that like you can do it on your first day, but recognize it's probably going to take you a while. And that's also okay. And it's gonna take your peers a while too. Even if everyone seems like they have it all figured out, um, everyone's trying to understand well, what I wanna do here. What's important? Everything seems great or everything seems like it's you know a prestigious thing. All right, how do I differentiate between the club or the activity or the class or the this, right? So give yourself some grace and some time um, and be motivated to do things because it's what you really wanna do. Um, college is long. There are going to be a lot of classes when you come to orientation where you're like, ooh, I want to take 19 credits because I want to be in this one and that one. I promise you that class is going to get offered again. Take it later, right? I promise you that party is going to happen at another weekend. It's going to be the exact same one and the same people will be there. You didn't miss anything, right? I promise you that club you want to be in, if you didn't get, it to, get into it the first time or you missed a deadline, there's another chance. College is long. So think about your experience, not just in, I got to do it all right now. That can cause a lot of stress. But talk to people about how you might incorporate the things you're interested in over the course of your time here. So we could go on and on and on about that. Um, I think underscoring that this is a very personal transition for you. Um, and so we all come with influences. Maybe parents want you to do this or do that. Or you saw someone else do this and you want to follow in their footsteps. All of those things are valid, um, but really spend some time to think about what do you as a person want to get out of this experience? Uh, and we're happy to help make that happen for you here. Okay. So James, do you want to answer the bridge question really quick? And then we can go to our next question. Yeah, sure thing. So um, I try not to talk too much about bridge. I love the program, so I'll keep it short. Uh, but the Bridge Program has been uh, part of the Center for Diversity and Engineering. Um, way back in the 80s, it was called the Office of Minority Programs. So it's been around since the late 80s to early 90s. And every summer, we bring a cohort of incoming first year engineers to UVA. Last year was virtual for obvious reasons, and this year will be virtual again um, to just kind of get acclimated to UVA and Charlottesville as a whole. Um, bridge cohort members, they come in and they make lifelong friends. Um, you know, I've talked to folks back in the nineties that said my, some of my groomsmen in my wedding were folks I met during bridge. And we see the same kind of just this almost familial bond in the bridge students from last year's cohort. And you know them saying, wow, I'm all the way in California. And the only way I was able to make connections was through this program. Um, so it's, um, you know, again, they, they come during three weeks over the summer, um, there's a three credit math course, which is for college credit. So you're already starting your college classes before everybody else. I'm um, just kind of give you the opportunity to brush up on some of the math skills that you'll need, you know, to be successful, whether you go to Calc 1, Calc 2, or multivariable calculus. Uh, so it's a cool opportunity to brush up, refresh on some of those foundational skills you're needing in a math class, or just be introduced to them. And all of those options are fine. Um, so you take the math class, um, you know, the different workshops that we run um, to get you connected with support staff, like the folks that are here. Um, we do can have conversations about wellness, right? So a lot of what we're talking about right now is how do you take care of yourself? To Blake's point, like how do you personalize this experience? So really having conversations about what it means to like understand what college means when you get here, you know how to make this a personal experience, how not to compare it. We really hone in on like teamwork and community and the values that 
we want to see um, in the CDE. So you'll see this, I changed my background. This is a little uh, kind of a picture I snapped. Um, in the CDE, we try to model this idea that as in good engineers, to what Lisa said, like we work together, there's teamwork, you know, the comparison thing, we completely reject, we throw it out the window. So like really getting us in the mindset of what that means and working on and modeling that before classes even start. Um, so again, the math class, we have different workshops, um, we get you connected to different support staff, we get you connected to different faculty. So, you know, what? Well, I'm thinking about maybe being a, I don't know, biomedical, biomedical, maybe, or maybe mechanical, or maybe chemical. We'll have you talking to faculty members who can talk through all of those different uh, courses and disciplines and say, all right, this is the decision I want to make. I'm, I know I want to do chemical now. All right, so you have you talking to faculty, you know, folks like study abroad, financial aid, all the different ways that you can ex potentially experience UVA, not just engineering, but UVA in general, as well as Charlottesville, because we do want you to get outside this UVA bubble, all right? So we go and explore Charlottesville too. So there are different opportunities that we have, again, just to get you acclimated to the UVA community, to the Charlottesville community, if you're taking, again, through this math course, through different workshops, um, and just through, you know, you working with a group of peers that are also first year engineers, trying to figure it out for themselves too. So you have folks that you can already say, hey, I know here's gonna, here's gonna be my study group. Here's gonna be the people I go to the dining hall with. Here's the crew that I go play basketball with. Or, you know, in the case of some of the bridge cohort members this past summer, here are the folks I'm gonna live with my second year. So it's a really cool opportunity for you to, again, kind of build community your first day. We have everywhere between 30 or so students each cohort. And you'll get an email from me around May-ish, right? So it's a really short application. Uh, we ask you a few questions um, and then, uh, you know, we look forward to welcoming you this summer or yeah, this upcoming summer. Uh, but any questions that you have about Bridge, I'll leave my email in the uh, in the chat and I also posted the website that is uh, that talks a little bit more about Bridge. We're happy to answer any more detailed questions that you have. Thank you, James. One of our questions is about what are the hidden opportunities students should know about? And that's definitely one of them is Bridge. Cool. All right. So this is our next to last question, and then we'll get back to hidden opportunities. But to kind of wrap around the conversation about uh, making a successful transition, usually the way, or a way, I will say, for me, it's usually, but not always for everyone on the call. Usually I meet students who are like, things aren't going great. And that might be our first interaction we have with each other. Like, hey, I heard about you, saw you in orientation. Um, I, I got an issue. Um, so I wanted us to talk about um, the panelists here. What are some ways that students um, typically struggle maybe when they start college and how, what, from our perspective, what are some ways they can avoid these struggles? So Lisa, I'll let you kick off and then we'll go to James. I think a couple of ways. Um, I think the, the one that's hardest for me to help is the struggling on just basically asking for help, um, you know, kind of staying silent and trying to power through on your own. Um, that again is is probably one of the most difficult places to be. Um, so students, um, you know, as they transition, especially into their late teens into the twenties, they develop. Um, you know, different mental health disorders, and that's difficult to talk about. Um, they struggle with family issues, being away from home from the first time. Um, both, uh, we all have experience in student affairs, and I have a long history as well as blank in residential life. And so just the like life transition of doing laundry for the first time, knowing who to go to talk to, right? Um, all of this is totally normal. Um, and I think it's it's kind of exacerbated by the fact that, you know, you've gone through high school typically, um, or maybe if we have some community college transfers who are listening in, um, you know, you've you've mastered the systems at your current location, right? Like you know the people, you're top dog now, you have your community, and now in college you have to start it all over again. And again, depending on the individual, that might be easier, it might be more difficult. Um, so it's just about knowing yourself and being okay saying like, could, like, could this be better? Who can I talk to about this? And that can be, again, to the ecosystem. It could be a myriad of different people. 
it could just be, you know, asking your RA or reaching out to James, Blake, or I. It could be about your career um, and you can reach out to engineering and career development, right? Um, so it's just, I think one of the hardest um, transitions is just knowing yourself and being okay asking asking for help. Um, that I think is one of the the most difficult things I find. Thanks, Lisa. Very helpful advice. James, from your perspective, what are some areas where students typically struggle when they start college and how can they avoid these struggles? Yeah. So again, all of what Lisa said, that's real, y'all. Ask for help. Like it's so much easier for us to fix it the front end than you know to find out that something tragic happened. Uh, we'll still be there, we'll still work it out, but ask for help early and often. Um, something that I see is you know, Blake, and I've heard you say this before. It's like, does anybody know what GPA Beyonce had? No, you don't, right? Um, and I love that because I feel like so many times folks come in and it's like, oh, I was top of my class and I did everything right. And I had my, my transcript said A and stop. Maybe that won't happen when you come here, right? Or maybe that won't happen when you go to college. And maybe you'll get a problem set that keeps you up until the wee hours of the night. You just can't get it. Or maybe you have that test or quiz where you get your first, I don't know, C, or you get a D. Like that, that happens, right? There's gonna be times where you won't quite hit the mark. Um, and I've seen students where I've seen students where that happens, and it's a it's a real major blow to their sense of like self. And I guess one thing I would encourage you to do is realize sometimes we don't hit the mark, right? And that's okay. We have community. You have your peers. Again, you have good help seeking behaviors by reaching out to the folks that are on this call and folks that you'll meet during your time at UVA and with an engineer. That can help through that, right? So it's like, cool, we have free tutoring. How do we wrap that tutoring around to make sure that you're you know, prepared for next time? Or, you know, how do you sit down and talk to, you know, Liz Ramirez Weaver or Katie Fowler, who are our CAPS counselors, so kind of counselors embedded within the engineering school to help through some of these processes or talk about time management. Or just, you know, just say, hey, look, I just wasn't on it today. I had a really bad day and that just happened. So I think being okay with the fact that, as I think Blake mentioned it, like college is long and all the good things we have time to get to. And there are going to be times where, again, we don't necessarily always get it right. And that's okay. Right. So being okay with the fact that in this growth period, which is college, sometimes we want to get it right, sometimes we want to make mistakes, and that's all a part of the experience. But not letting that, not letting one mistake or like one bad grade or one bad moment feel like it's a reflection of yourself and your self worth. Like, you no, know, you're accepted at UVA, or you think about you, like you're here, you're smart, you're welcome, you're valued. This one grade, this one test, this one problem set does not determine your worth. And oftentimes I do feel like I find students who, you know, they kind of buy into that. So one of the things I would encourage you to do is just to say, you know, hey, look, I didn't, I didn't do it well that time. And that's cool, right? So just reach out, make sure that you have folks in your corner because we are here and let's figure out how we can work past that. Um, so that's the only thing I think I would add other than all the great advice that Lisa said. And I'll, you know. Yeah, all that is very key advice. I, I obviously agree with all of it. Um, so James' point, I think, about grades, that's one of the areas I think we all see students struggle a lot with. Um, and don't think that we're just telling you all that when you get here, you're going to bomb everything. Um, that's not true. Um, that's not true for most of our students, right? Every once in a while, sure, but usually it wasn't about school. It's like something else is going on, right? Um, school's not in a vacuum. You're still living a life. There's still other things going on, right? Um, what we mean about grades is that um, oftentimes, we find that students will assign a lot of their sense of self-worth to the letter grade they get. And that's not just because you all think, you know, letters are great, right? I love ABCs. It's because you might think that other people care about those things and your future job and your future grad school and your future happiness and salary are all tied up into what you get in that first semester math class. And it makes it feel so consequential. I'm like, gosh, if I don't get this homework 100%, and then I'm not going to get an A at the end. And I've already lost 10% of my points. Like all the types of mind things that happen, right? Um, the best thing that I, we can tell you is that that association is not true. It's just not. No one ever asked how good of a student I was in college. Um, 
but they'd still take my advice. You all should ask <laughs> what happened in my college experience. But I have proof that you don't have to go straight through A's and that guarantees you a great salary and a happy life, right? Um, understand when you get here that the things that you might associate with kind of significance and importance and kind of a great life might not actually be true or evidence-based, right? You all are engineers now, rely on some data and evidence. Um, a great resource for this particular topic is our engineering career development office. They'll tell you, hey, employers care about GPA a little bit, but they far more care about, can you work in a group? Or like, can you problem solve? Like what happens when something fails, right? What do you do? That's an everyday reality. Um, one of our great faculty, uh, Professor Jose Gomez, I was having lunch with him forever ago now. And he talked about how terrible of a college student he was. This is a professor. He wasn't a terrible middle school student, a terrible college student. And he said, I was so bad and I eventually got on my feet. But when I got my first job, I was so used to failing that it really didn't deter me. But my colleagues that were great students maybe and never got used to failing, that job really took a toll on them because they couldn't understand what was wrong with them and what was wrong with something else. And it really affected them when things didn't go right the first time. And he was so used to kind of battling through adversity that it didn't affect them at all. That's a much better job experience, um, having some adversity as opposed to, oh, everything goes right when I do it. Um, problems as engineers, well, you don't always want things to go right. You definitely want to push things to failure sometimes. Think about that as well, right? I want to know how you, I respond to like adversity. I want to know the ways that I go around this. I don't want to be perfect. And so I think that's the goal and that gives you a lot more value. Um, easier said than done. You all have been getting letter grades probably ever since you can remember. Um, most of you didn't get just thumbs up in school or smiley faces. You got letter grades, you got SAT scores, you got all these other evaluations and external validations. That takes a while to separate your sense of self-worth from those external validations. Um, but I encourage you to start that process early and start thinking about, okay, this grade, it's more reflective of what did I learn maybe? Or maybe it's not even, maybe something else happened this semester and the grade doesn't say anything about what I actually learned. Um, focus more on learning and mastering the material um, and seeking out help and support as we mentioned uh, to do those things well. That's the main way I see students typically struggle uh, when they come to college and over, over emphasis on letter grades and what that means for things that are gonna happen 10 years from now. Um, not a lot is the short answer. All right, so here's our last question, um, and then we'll have some Q&A. So be thinking of your questions, um, and please do put them in the chat. We'll get all of them at the end. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to get to all of them. Um, last question I have for the panelists. Are there any hidden opportunities that incoming students should know about? I'll kick it to Lisa. I would say, um... Some of your faculty will be really good at sharing this opportunity with you and others um, themselves might not know about this. So there's a, a, a system called Mead, Mead Money. Um, and faculty can take you out to lunch, um, to coffee, tea. Um, and it's a great way for you to connect with a faculty member. Um, on the student level, Engineering Student Council often provides opportunities for the flip side for students to invite their faculty out. And I would say beyond, you know, accessing us as a resource, it is super important to get to know at least one, maybe two of your instructors more than just as your instructor. These people are human beings. They have children, they have hobbies, they have life, they have music interests. Uh, you can talk to them about their research interests, but I would say, um, one of the best kind of hidden gems is our faculty. They do research, they care about students, and it's really great to just get to know them outside of the classroom. Absolutely. Faculty are here far beyond the stereotype of what you might think about. I've yet to meet one that was just like, I don't care about students. I feel everybody. That's just not the truth. All right. What about you, James? There we go. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think two things. Um, you know, I think something I've found uh, in my time at UVA Engineering is that sometimes uh, engineering students, they don't go outside of the engineering school. I think that's a, I think that's a gem that we're missing there. 
and being from Charlottesville, I would say there are a lot of really cool opportunities in the community. So I would say if you have the opportunity to explore the community, by all means, do so. Right. So it is not just UVA. This is college in general. I think folks come to their, their college of their choice and they just kind of stay on that campus. Then explore all the really cool opportunities that are around us. So we have like downtown Charlottesville, which is not far, but like a really cool area and like all these beautiful places for hiking and outdoors and community. So like Charlotte was a really cool area. So I guess I would, that's the hidden gem. Of course, this is my backyard. I grew up here for pretty much all my life. It's really cool opportunities um, to like engage with folks outside of the UVA bubble and to see all the really cool ways that UVA and Charlottesville work together. All the opportunities we have to like fill in gaps. Like that's a really cool space right there to kind of, you know, uh, I think as, as engineers, we think about how do we, how do we best impact the society around us through like this engineering mindset that we have in research. A lot of cool opportunities, not just in terms of research for university, but also things happening in the community that you can get involved with, like Hack Sheet, uh, Seville. Some of folks who are interested in like computer sciences and like that's your thing and hack, I have no idea how to hack anything. but. You do have Hack Seville, right? It's a really cool um, uh, organization right here in the community that you can get involved with. You also have opportunities like going over to Pearl Island, which is one of my favorite restaurants in the city. So if anybody likes Caribbean food, there you go right there. If you ever in the CDE, you know, when we're able to meet in person, I guarantee you we're gonna have Pearl Island because I feel like I have a discount there at that point. We get them catered all the time, but I would say explore the city, you know, outside of our, our bubble and just kind of see what else is out there. Because Charlottesville is a gem that should. Absolutely. There are way more places to eat in Charlottesville than we have people who need to go somewhere to eat. Um, that's one of the fun stats. Like we have one of the highest like per capita like eateries for people. So um, like all up and down the street, all the nooks and corners. Uh, I have yet to have a bad meal in Charlottesville. Um, and I'm looking forward to having more uh, good meals <laughs> in the future. Um, those are great opportunities. Talk to the faculty, get to know the community. Um, college is a, an immersive experience, right? So when you get here, you're not like, when you're in the shower, you're at college. When you're walking on the street, you're at college. <laughs> when you're uh, like in class, you're in college. And so consider this as a community. Um, it's not always a lot of time in high school or other areas uh, to kind of really get out there and explore things. This is the place you live now um, and be a positive member of that community. I'm going to think about it too. So don't just be here and just consume and like trash stuff, right? Which none of you would do. Uh, but think about the community. Uh, we have all types of, of great people and, and organizations to be a part of. Opportunities I can think of. Um, talk to students. So we have later today, we're going to have some additional um, students, uh, student organizations, ask them. Um, being a part of these organizations is honestly one of the best ways to hear about things. So you'll hear students talk about, oh, I went to a conference that Nesby was sponsoring and I went and I got an internship. Who would have thought, right? Or I went somewhere else and I found a mentor or they're having like a night with, I don't like, not Capital One, but like, I don't know some company, right? And I got to meet somebody and I got a job. But those stories are not infrequent. Um, and so being plugged into a community, I think is one of the best things you can be, whatever community that is. So whether it's one of the student groups that we're gonna have talking later today, or if you hang out in the CDE all the time, or if you come by and say hi to Lisa and I, just being plugged in and communicating your interests with people. Um, Everywhere you go, like, hey, I'm interested in this, I'm interested in that. Um, you'd be surprised who we know and what opportunities exist that we see something and we get in our emails. We're like, oh, Ramon would be so great for this. Ramon's always talking about this thing. Um, so don't be, don't be too shy if, if you, it's possible. Um, let people know and be a part of a community, I would say. Um, check your email with another great one. All of you will get a, a newsletter. And of course, not everybody opens it. There's so many opportunities in there and so many things that go unclaimed from scholarships to internships to uh, experiences, um, like usually like low cost or free type of things in a newsletter um, to tutoring, to all types of things. Um, check your email. 
so many things will come through there. Uh, you're going to get a lot of emails. That's uh, one of the struggles also. We should have mentioned that. You'll get a lot of emails and you'll have to learn email management, which is a skill for life. But check your email. The best way for us to get in contact with you and the first way that we'll always try is via email. So do your best to check that. All right. So we're going to transition to your questions. Anyone want to pop something in the chat? While you are putting it in the chat, I'm going to go through the questions that were submitted to you and see if anything, something we haven't answered yet. As Blake is pulling up questions, I think um, the other thing I really love um, and obviously it's kind of intimidating during a re recording um, to maybe pop in and show your face or ask a question is like, share yourself with other people. The more other people know about you and can love you for all you are, um, the more you you are, the more we can be as well as a, as a community. Um, so don't ever hesitate um, to, you know, virtually online is one thing, but to, to really show your face and to like share um, more than just surface level about like yourself, your interests, your experiences. We love to, to get to know your, your full, full person and your full interests and your full experiences. So maybe it's not a question, maybe it's just, hey, uh, I'm interested in this. Does this exist at UVA or you know, this has been my experience. Absolutely. A question from the registered people. Um, will there be an opportunity to explore different majors before having the pick on one? You're a great person for that question. <laughs> yeah, um, we found actually through statistics, if you like stats, the majority of our students come in saying they want to major in one thing and then they major in something completely different. So I think that's indicative of an environment where we encourage exploration um, and interrogate your interests and what, what will really align. Um, that said, the programming, you'll be assigned a first year advisor likely. Um, someone who is your instructor or the bridge program, um, James, um, to really kind of help explore what it is that you're interested in, look up and around a little bit. Um, oftentimes we hear students say, I was really good at math and science. So people told me I should major in engineering. What flavor of engineering? I don't know. And that's absolutely okay. Um, most times people have um, a definitive choice based on, um, again, this is based on stats from our students. Um, the most frequently cited uh, factor is um, parents or family friends uh, had a huge influence. And you know what, if you have, if you don't have parents or family friends who are engineers, then they might not play a, a role in your decision and that's absolutely okay. So in terms of your experience in the program, there are, um, you know, the intro to engineering classes really help, helps to kind of like understand what engineering is, the design process. Um, it helps you connect with the individual instructor that's really attuned to first years and that transition to becoming an engineer and thinking like an engineer, as well as programming um, that the departments do and our office kind of organizes. Um, Blake did a fantastic job this year, kind of getting all the departments to, to kind of provide insight into what their alumni go and do. Um, even hearing directly from some of those alumni, there'll be those opportunities tomorrow. So I hope that you're already on your own journey of figuring out not just the curricular piece, right? Because a lot of students ask about the major and the curriculum, but we really want to try to encourage you to think not just about choosing coursework, but your whole experience around you, getting involved in the community, like how you translate what you know into helping people in the community, um, thinking about what problems you're curious about. Um, if you watch the engineering career development little pre-recorded thing, they talk a lot about this. It's like, what are you, what are you curious about? Like, 
put curriculum aside, but like, what are you really curious about? What kind of world problems do you want to solve? What kind of leader do you want to be? And those are the kind of conversations that I think you'll start to have and you'll realize that the curriculum is a one, but one vehicle to get to, to where you want to be. But there's all these opportunities such as research or community service or a job or a research abroad, service abroad, right? So there's a lot of more that you can do in terms of your learning and growth um, within the curriculum and outside of the curriculum as well. Absolutely. You'll find that we encourage you to get out of the classroom sometimes. And in fact, your learning gets enhanced and you might even get deeper learning when you don't just learn it in the classroom, uh, when you talk to other people, when you make connections. Another question pre submitted. Uh, what faculty advising services are available for first year engineering students? That's a great question. I'll start this. And if I miss anything, Lisa, you can chime in with this. Um, so, in fact, your first year advisor, if it's not James, because you did Bridge, um, it's likely going to be your instructor for introduction to engineering, which is a course that all of you will be taking in your first semester, typically. Um, so, that's your faculty, that's a faculty member. They teach your class. You'll see them like three times a week, two, three times a week. And that's your academic advisor. Um, and these are folks who know they're signing up for this. So it's not just kind of a random person. Oh, I only care about students. No, they want to do this. It's a part of the job they really enjoy. And so you'll have an excellent opportunity to kind of learn in that class from them about like different types of engineering, um, some things like coding, just kind of a good general exposure to engineering as the name would suggest. You can also connect with them and say, hey, what type of engineering do you do? What did you consider? How did you get through your first year physics class? Um, math is kind of difficult sometimes. What did you do? Who should I talk to? Right? Do you have any colleagues, opportunities? Right? So they're full of wisdom and knowledge and insight. And so that's probably one of the deepest faculty connections you'll have in your first year. Anything to add to that, Lisa? OK, great. So. Chat. Well, I guess if um, if you're thinking beyond the first year, so once you declare your major, um, actually our students just declared their majors, it's a non-competitive process. Um, so you choose your major and we assign you to a faculty advisor in the major. Um, and that person is with you likely throughout the rest of your career. So you have one first year advisor who kind of helps you with that transition, helps you explore. Um, and then once you declare your major, you have someone who has expertise and understanding contextually um, in the curriculum that you choose to start in your second year. That's great. Someone asked about the first year courses. Um, that information is around. We'll talk more about that in orientation, I think. But in general, our engineers take a common first year curriculum. So Usually you'll be finishing and starting and finishing the calculus sequence, and that might bleed over into the summer. So calculus two and three are required. Calc one is not required, but is recommended if that's what the math placement test recommends you do. Um, everyone should take that. It is required. Please take that. That'll help us give you the best insight on what math class to take. We're we'll taking that. Chemistry, uh, introduction to programming, we offer that in a few different ways, depending on your prior experience with programming. Physics a couple of electives here and there. You'll take Introduction to Engineering, which we just talked about. You'll take STS 1500, which is kind of like an introduction to ethics, kind of like overall, kind of really getting into like the whys of engineering, not just the how. So a common first year curriculum, obviously some variation in there, depending on if you come in with credits. Don't worry about that right now. Enjoy this moment. I think I don't want you to get caught up on that. We, we'll work it out. We'll talk about it. Um, there's nothing we can do to change it right now. So don't even worry about it. Just enjoy these couple of days of programming. That's what I would say. Um, anything in the chat? Let me check that. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I had a question about partnerships and company partnerships. But I'm going to broaden that question to be, what ways do we work together to support students in engineering, whether that be with other corporations or with one another? Take yes, a stab, say, yes, I'll start. Um, I'll say that I'm meeting with uh, companies you know, all the time uh, to think about how we can create pipelines between, you know, engineering, all of the talents that you all have, and really cool internships or full-time jobs. Um, so, 
folks that I have regular meetings with, the like Lido's, uh, Capital One, Deloitte. I even had you know, a couple of conversations with the CIA, which was like, so like, they came in and I realized they had like a profile on me. And they, as soon as I walked in the door, they kind of like slid the paper under that notebook, but they had my picture, a profile. So they had all this really cool research, uh, which was a little bit scary, but um, CIA and a bunch of other folks like locally, as well as like these really bigger name uh, companies. Um, we also work really closely with, you know, to the, the point of companies working really closely with the Center for Career Development and Engineering. Um, and, you know, to Blake's point and Lisa's point, what we're all saying, we have a student that says, hey, I'm really interested in thing X. And we have the resume, you know, we can share it with our folks and partners over in career development. And they say, oh, great. I've just talked to a company that's looking for an intern on this exact thing. And like, there's a national partnership right there, right? Um, so I would say, you know, I think we've said a couple of times, but if you all come to one of us and, you know, you seek an opportunity, whether it's study abroad, research, an internship, a job, community, like community involvement around service, we can get you connected to some place or some person that knows the answer if we don't. Um, because we're talking to folks externally as well as internally daily. Um, again, to make sure that you have what you need. Again, it's a resource rich institution. If there's something here that you want, I would say just ask for it. So if we had plugged in with one of us, you're plugged in with all of us. Um, because this is the work that we do. That's always good to know. James has a very cool job. And lots of people want to connect with James because James is a, it's a, it's a guy. And then the at Lisa about how we work together. Oh, man. Yeah, beyond, um, I think James nailed it, right? Like, again, to the ecosystem kind of model, we, we all partner together. And most importantly, we want to partner with you, right? Um, the, the partnership that you develop in terms of developing your own brand and your own kind of prototyping of your own self, um, we, are, we are your partner as well. Um, and so I really value that partnership. For example, um, I was talking to a student the other day and she's like, well, I think I'm thinking about an internship next summer, um, you know, cause I don't think I'm quite ready for something this summer. And my, my challenge to her was, you know, you are already an engineer. And she had discounted her own kind of experience already. I was like, oh, I would never get an internship in the first year. Well, guess what? Some of our first years get internships in that first summer. Um, and we often try to break down kind of that own kind of self-selection out um, through the partnerships um, that we develop with students, right? We can't message that unless you're ready to hear it. Um, so definitely partner with people who are willing to challenge you to help you kind of explore all the different opportunities and to make sure that you kind of align those opportunities with what your interests are. For example, I pointed out like she had taken intro to computer science the first semester. I'm like the general populace in the United States has never coded in Python. Uh, <laughs> you have a skill set that's beyond the general populace already as a first year. Right in your curriculum and in you know your building of a community and your transition to college, like that alone is a skill set that people are already looking for. So, I really do value the partnership that I get to forge, um, build with students. Just got a question about internships. I heard that most internships were eight to ten weeks in the summer. Is it possible to get an internship for four to six weeks? You know, Lisa? I think it depends. Um, I think that would be a great question for engineering career development. Yes. Um, I think there are there are certainly um, opportunities called externships that they have set up um, that might be in line with what you're looking for. Um, so it's more of like a, a quick snippet, an understanding of what a, a company does kind of on a short-term basis. I think um, I, I'm not one that interfaces with employers, so I, I can't say for sure that like that's 
not a thing, but I can imagine having someone for four to six weeks might not be enough time to onboard them and have them actually do something. So the experience might be completely different and it might just depend on what you want to get out of that experience. So I'm, I'm not going to say it doesn't exist, but I would challenge and say, um, you need to make sure that that experience is in line with what you actually want to do during that internship. Um, yeah, I hope that helps. Yeah. And even more insight on that, the link that we just put in the chat um, for more open house events, there's a pre-recorded session from engineering career development that's on that webpage. And if they don't answer that question there, um, I'm sure they'll direct you to a place, but I, I imagine they'll gloss over your internships in that talk. So we're at time. Thank you so much to the panelists. Um, thank you all so much for being here. This recording is going to be archived and likely linked back to that same open house uh, webpage that I put into the chat. So please go to the rest of the events today. Please enjoy your time. Congratulations. Um, and we are happy to meet you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. See ya.